one of India's smallest states, Mizoram, is amongst the most ethnically vibrant. It also is arguably most geographically challenged. As is the case with the Northeast India states, topographical constraints can make life quite difficult in Mizoram. And life here is a journey of ups and downs, of joys and sorrows, of struggles and achievements. A journey that ends only in death. But some people never die. They never fade away. Like James Dokuma. Mijo, Naga, Garo and Khasi from the east down to the wave toes boulders of Kanyakumari from the gateway of India on the west to the snowy mountains on the north with one accord we march together. Written in the Mizo language, this poem is one of Dokuma's many conveying the message that India is one irrespective of caste, creed, religion and ethnicity. Seemingly unbelievable for a man who 30 years ago believed that the future of the Mizo people was in seceding from India through armed struggle. Dr. Dokuma has been known to me since a long time. Well, he was uh, a samurai fool, he was an instructor, instructor in Hindi. The reason why he came over ground, uh, I mean underground was that at that time, there is a wholesale dissatisfaction uh, among the Mizo youth. We felt that we are so much neglected. I remember was that we went home for college vacation from uh, Silong to Gauhati by bar from Gauhati to Silchar by third class train. And then from Silchar, we have to find a full truckload where that, that could brought us to Aizo. And the road was Katsa. In dry season, it is full of dust. And during monsoon, it is a quiet mire. Here and there, there are some shrub pushing our face, a lot of insect in our body. That was the condition, the road condition there. And there, there come a famine, mouth and famine. There are a lot of people went hungry without food. And the food quality that was supplied to us was very, very low. So especially the older people got a lot of disease for that. So there was a um, widespread dissatisfaction. And uh, we blame all this to government of Assam and government of India. We have a good leader, a good orator in Mr. Laldenga. And 
Mr. Laldenga knew how to whip up our dissatisfaction. <laughs> the Lee understand only the sound of the gun. Memorandum, talking, negotiation, they look upon us as a very backward tribal people and we did not listen, uh, they did not listen to us. So that was our idea, that was our opinion at that time. Dr. Adokuma's opinion was the same with ourselves. He was a uh, block president in the rural MNF party. So as a good speaker in Mizo as well as in Hindi, and uh, a wise man also. And he has some quality of bone leadership. He was elected deputy speaker. And I did not know exactly at what time he was out of uh, prison, out of Indian prison. He came out very soon, I suppose. At the time, uh, Mizoram was granted Union territory. I thought that he was free. From that time, he started writing books and essays and other. And since he was very special and very good in Mizo language, so he wrote some book, and uh, most of the some of the book written by him was prescribed by the Nehu University as a textbook for college students. Then known as Assam's Lusha Hills district, Mizoram experienced one of independent India's worst famines induced by rats following the cyclic flowering of bamboos. The legendary Lal Denga formed the Mizo National Famine Front to protest the apathy of the Indian government towards the famine situation. The front subsequently turned militant, espousing cessation from India. Dokuma, then working in the Assam Rifles as a Hindi teacher for local recruits, joined the underground movement and soon became one of Lal Denga's key men until his arrest in 1968. Life in jail brought out Dokuma's creativity and it helped that he had command over Hindi and English besides his mother tongue, Mizo. Confined to his cell, he took to writing and brought out his first novel. Three years in jail converted him to a full-time writer and there was no looking back. He began gravitating towards Gandhism, a departure from his days of wielding guns. Somebody uh, has written 
on the wall of jail. Uh, Eternal spirit is the candle's mind by Lord Byron. That what it gave me uh, it gave me a high up aspiration to write the book. So as you know, we are the free, uh, freedom fighter uh, for our country uh, to have a sovereignty. But that is the hopeless in my in my mind. No. So how can we do? What shall I can do? What thing I will do like that? So yeah, okay. Everything has gone. Now I unable to join again the MNF also. Therefore, I am resuming a writing uh, for my country and uh, for the next generation. Prior to his death in March 2007, Dokuma wrote some 50 books including novels, essays, collection of poems and short stories. Deemed masterpieces, his works have been lapped by misos as well as connoisseurs of literature who swear by his translated works. No one, perhaps, has a better measure of Dokuma's literary genius than his interpreter and literature enthusiast, Margaret L. Pacho. James Dokuma was a wonderful man and uh, having known him personally for a very long time uh, and having been his uh, translator, we went to uh, Gohati, we went to Arunachal Pradesh, we went to New Delhi and uh, he was a wonderful man. Uh, he was somebody with, uh, equipped with a very, very fine human spirit and he was very generous, he was absolutely giving and uh, uh, that brought about all uh, the natural flair in him as a writer and uh, as a person everything that was about him about his uh, uh, spirit about his kindness his benevolence that came out in his attributes as a writer and uh, that has been i think consistently uh, depicted in his works and everywhere that we went uh, whenever people asked him questions uh, he was so spontaneous despite the fact that you know he studied only up to the fifth standard so uh, he was uh, absolutely intellectual, though he did not have that uh, great academic acclaim, but he was an absolute intellectual and uh, he was, I think, loved by everybody and that was the kind of response that he got from the audiences, whether young or old. Recognition for Dokuma's contributions to Mizo literature and the change in the thought process of a generation fed on rebellion came in 1985, when he was conferred Padma Shri. The national award coincided with him being named the father of Mizo lexicography. He was also adjudged the best Mizo writer in 1984, 1986, 1990 and 1996. The Sahitya Academy Award came in 1998. Awards and creativity notwithstanding, getting one's works published in a state lacking proper infrastructure can be an uphill task. So, Dokuma set up his own printing press at Aizol to print and publish his own books. Death at the age of 75 prevented him from realizing his dream of totting up 100 books. His kin, however, have kept his memories alive by carrying on the printing business. Dokuma had a vision beyond the boundaries of Mizoram and his ability to bring out the finer things in life made him connect with readers elsewhere. He was a universal writer, although his writing was heavy on local content, something 
his publishers keenly awaited. I saw him, Dr. Dokuma, uh, Dr. Dokuma, James Dokuma, while I was in primary school. It might be in 1951 or 52. I met him again in 1974. At the time, I was uh, an editor of one uh, departmental magazine, Major, and uh, he was a good writer. I know that uh, while he was in jail, he wrote some fictions, good fictions. And I asked him uh, about his writing. And at the time, uh, he was very poor because he was kept in jail for a very long time. He was very poor. He could not publish his uh, own writing himself. Then uh, he handed over to me uh, his manuscript. Then I published. And after some times, it was also used in a uh, college textbook. Jay, he was a very, very good man. He was very kind to others. I may say he was my Philosopher <laughs> also. Uh, this is a list of books uh, written by Dr. James Dokuma. Just before the, he passed away, he came to my residence and he handed over this list with copyright so that I may be able to uh, publish, continue publica publication of uh, all these books. Uh, before that, I published about 15 books of books written by uh, Dr. James Dokuma. It is Dokuma's belief in the Gandhian philosophy that is of more significance, that guns are not a solution to any issue that dogs the people. Dokuma was also a die-hard environmentalist, besides being a writer of the highest caliber and a reformed Gandhian. You could perhaps attribute it to his upbringing amid nature in Sialsuk village near Aizol, where he was born. The hill on which his ancestral house stands has aptly been named after him. The government of Mizoram an island of peace since statehood in 1987 ensures conservation of this hill. My father, as I have seen him, was honest, hardworking, patriotic and a nature lover. He was the perfect family man, giving his time and love despite the work pressure. Through his writings, he aged the people of Mizoram on to promote peace, culture and love for nature. Father is no longer with us, but we are trying to ensure his idols live forever. I have traveled quite a bit also with uh, Mr. James Dokuma uh, and uh, he was absolutely a very simple man, very generous, very charitable and even for us as younger people, even though there was a lot of uh, age difference, he was somebody whom we could instantly establish a rapport with. He was very generous uh, in terms of his uh, uh, attitude. And even when we used to ask him on the way to the, on the journey, you know, whether it was in Delhi or whether it was uh, far flung Arunachal or even to Gohati, uh, he was the kind of person who was uh, always ready to share his knowledge with us. And uh, on one occasion, I had even asked him uh, as to what uh, his inspiration was uh, to be, uh, you know, because he was such a great writer. And he said that uh, having gone through all the hardships of the uh, insurgency and having realized that uh, the is far greater than the uh, bullet or even the gun. 
uh, for that matter. He had decided to give it up and because, you know, he had lived such a hard life in the jungles and he had also decided that, you know, that the spirit should be free and in order to free the spirit, what one needed was the pen rather than the gun. So uh, those were the, the, those are the things actually that uh, still stay to my mind at this point of time. And uh, he has inspired all of us, not only me, but uh, a whole lot of the younger generation also to take up the pen. And um, it was actually his words that, um, you know, he used to tell me that uh, when we used to go, people used to ask him, uh, you know, you're a Padma Shri awardee. And you're also, you know, uh, uh, you've also been awarded the Bhasha Shaman also for that matter. And also a lot of uh, awards within the state. So, you know, where are your writings? And, uh, you know, unfortunately, his writings have just been, just a couple of them have been unfortunately translated. And so uh, he, of course, and especially at that time, there was only one novel, Gabatha, that had been translated. So he used to keep telling me that, you know, it is your work. Uh, there are people like you who, you know, uh, who should translate because you'll know the language. Whereas, you know, he himself was well versed only in Hindi and also Nepali and uh, in Mizo. So he said, for me, it is impossible and I cannot learn the language anymore at this point of time. And it is up to you all, the younger generation, to continue. So uh, he actually challenged me many times to take up translation. And uh, because of that, uh, you know, I have actually stepped into the world of translation also, starting from the oral translations and then even to the written word for that matter. And so uh, these are the things that stay with me uh, even to this day. And I know that, you know, uh, whether turning to the pen or whether tr turning to translation, it has all be actually been through, uh, you know, the gift of uh, Pujim Stokuma. It's difficult to fill the void that Dokuma has left behind. But he has inspired many to document the changes in the Mizo society while keeping abreast of societies beyond. To show to the world, wielding the pen rather than the gun is the catalyst for progress in a society, however remote or inaccessible